Hey guys, my name is Sean and thanks for joining me on my video today. Today I'm going to walk through my Catalina Hackintosh build with this NZXT H1 case that I built for, um, it had a couple different purposes, right? I have two small kids and I take a lot of videos of them and so I wanted a rig that would um, I can use to edit videos for them as well as make some content for YouTube. And so this case I saw a couple months ago from a couple different YouTubers and it's been sold out ever since. I got an email the other day that it was in stock and as soon as I saw that email, I placed my order right away. I think five minutes after that, it was sold out again as well and then I think it's still sold out today. So I got the black version. Um, I, I want I wanted this case because it was small. Um, it's roughly seven by seven by twelve, and so uh, basically it's taking up seven inches on your uh, desk that you have. Even though it's small, I knew that I also wanted a very powerful machine, and so in this case, I went with the Ryzen 9 3900. X and this is a 12 core 24 thread processor. Um, I, I went with this processor because I, I do some uh, Tesla videos on the side and in those Tesla videos I'm shooting at 4k 60 frames per second and when I need to stabilize that it, it's very CPU intensive and so um, even with like an 8 core Mac Pro or MacBook Pro it, it wasn't able to do that very well and so that's why I went with this uh, processor. Um, but, the, but the second goal was to try to make something as cheaply as possible and so I did sacrifice in some places like for example um, this B450 board it was a hundred dollar board um, and at first I was like oh let me go with the cheaper board everything's still gonna work the same uh, but let me go with the cheaper board it wasn't until a couple days later after the system was up and running on the B450 board that I wanted much more from this Hackintosh system than I thought I, I initially did right initially I just wanted a powerful video editing beast but now like because it's almost there I, I also wanted the airdrop I also wanted to be able to take a video from my phone and then do an airdrop to my machine and then edit that video later and so I didn't have that ability and so here's kind of my reason for purchasing this X570i board uh, w with this board I have USB see uh, some of those some of the guys are looking for that also with this board i have an extra m.2 slot which i can add an aftermarket um, apple equivalent wi-fi and bluetooth and so this allows for wi-fi to work this allows for airdrop and all the other apple necessities to work as well too and so that i mean that basically made this machine 99 percent apple i guess if your question is what is that one person that isn't working for me that 1% is the the computer is not able to go to sleep and wake up from sleep properly and so the, the way I have my setting turned on now is I, I set my computer to never sleep the monitor I do set it to turn off but I set the computer never to sleep and so that way I don't run into that issue to, to me that's the 1% problem that I that it kind of doesn't feel like a true Mac so just to give a quick update on the build progress so far, I have 32 gigs of memory. Uh, these are two sticks of 16 gigs each, Corsair 3200 uh, megahertz. As far as storage, I went with the one terabyte NVMe drive, uh, M.2. And so it's from like a brand called Sabrin. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure, but they're probably the most, uh, they're not the most well known, but they're the most bang for your buck as far as price and performance and so they perform really well for the price if you're looking at the case now um, the case is pretty pricey at 349 but it does include two things that you don't have to buy separately so to the left there's the AIO it's uh, 140 millimeter and it's gonna keep your CPU cool also to the right of that last screen um, it's a power supply 600 watt power supply and so if you're to buy those things individually uh, on your own for a, with a different brand and a different case it would it would probably cost you about two hundred and fifty dollars or so and so the case itself i would say it's roughly a hundred bucks with those two additional things of two hundred and fifty or so um it it kind of the case seems really expensive up front but at the end of the day it's it's really just about a hundred dollars if you look at it from that perspective this case was pretty easy to build in um, all the cables like I said were kind of routed to where um, where they should be already and so it was just kind of plug and play at that point cable management was pretty easy um, and so overall it was a pretty easy build and quick build because all of the routing has already been done for me uh, here's me just plugging in the CPU fan and system fan HD audio for the front panel um, and, and as far as this Hackintosh 
everything that I know works so far on this board I do have a cable for the front panel USB-C but I don't have a place uh, on the board itself for that and so that cable I do have to that that cable I do have to tuck away um, but on the, the back of the board um, there is a USB-C cable and so putting down some thermal paste and spreading it across and then I'm gonna put the AIO on just going back and comparing the X570 board with the B450 board um, when I built the B450 board, I did a Geekbench 5 test and um, after I built this X570 board, I did a Geekbench test as well too. And the results were very similar. So as far as like performance wise, um, you're probably not going to see that big of a difference. If you look at this board, there's a, a couple more fans to kind of keep the uh, MME drive, um, my storage drive cool um, on the old board I didn't have that and so it would have ran a little warmer we're getting close to the end with this build here um, and I just want to talk about my experience of building my first Hackintosh just as my first Hackintosh I wouldn't say it's easy because it, it, it was definitely not easy because you have to find very compatible parts and and after you find those compatible parts then you have to place your orders and then with the environment that we're in right now it just takes a couple weeks for your parts to get to you and and some some of the parts are limited and so you have to kind of use different parts but then you, you want you still want to make sure they're they're compatible I, I tried using other people's files and stuff like that to, to get things going I was like okay I have the same motherboard I have the same um, I have the same GPU it should work I have the same CPU it should work and I did that three two to three times and at the end of the day it didn't work right it, it, it works some it works to boot up but it did, nothing else worked and so at the end of the day I, I basically just went to the vanilla guide open core and I just follow step by step um, and and built my own image and got everything up and running as best as I could and I think that's the best way uh, to to give you the amount of hours that I spent on it because it, it is my first one I would say probably about 30 to 40 hours researching parts and then probably another 20 to 30 hours just to to get it up and running now but but if you're gonna tell me to go build this system now I can probably get it done in less than an hour and so uh, it, it did take a lot of learning for me because it was my first build but it, to me it's definitely worth it because this machine here can compete with the Mac or the Apple Pro out there that's roughly $7,500 and so this is a picture of it running on my desktop I mean a lot of times if you're doing these is very late at night uh, when the kids are all asleep and and so this is uh, me running bench if you look at the single core I'm at 1300 uh, single core for um, the high single core out there for Apple is 1244 with the 9900k um, if you look at the multi-core I'm at 12532 and um, that puts this system right in between the 12 core and the 18 core system that are out there and that you're basically you're building a machine that's roughly $1,500 dollars 12 to $1,500 dollars that can compete with something that's seven thousand dollars and so to, to me with, with this whole COVID-19 and with us kind of being stuck at home this is kind of what I did with my time I, I built the system and I'm pretty proud of it everything's working well and I'm glad I got a chance to build it and so for me it's definitely worth it um, I, if I do have any recommendations out there Technoli his channel does a very good job for beginners and so if you want to build your own system that looks like this uh, go follow his channel Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.